and welcome to Mickey Art. My name is Michelle Edhouse and today I am again attacking that me challenge from Acrylic Pouring for Fun Facebook group and that is the string pull or chain pull. And um, I'm choosing string today and I'm actually going to do one of one of one of one of one of one of the one of what the one of one of one of one of one of one of the basic string pulls that many of you have probably seen before um, but I'm just practicing it because I would like to I've got a a big challenge coming up soon um, using the string pull idea and um, yeah this is definitely I want to get this right before I do it on the big one um, so what we're going to do is we've got some white house paint here it's been watered down with some flow troll and water and a little bit of pva glue to add some glueiness back into it or that glue adding glueiness um i found that the spring indoor outdoor um paint that i use from bunnings and i use it because it's really cheap um when you thin it down with flow troll and water to the thickness that I need to be able to to do this and as you can see it just keeps running and running and running and it doesn't build up much on the surface it's pretty much flat pretty quickly uh, and what I want to achieve with this is sorry and, and the glue yeah, when you water it down that much, the glue is needed to add a bit more glue back in. Some glueiness. We will call it the glueiness. Now, um, I'm when I think when I've watched a few of the the other videos on how to do these string pulls, what I think I'm doing wrong is I'm actually putting too much base paint down, and therefore the string is just like sinking down instead of sliding across the top. So I'm going to try doing less paint, but enough for the paint to, the colours, to hang out and play. So I'm just going to, what am I going to use? Great question, what am I going to use? I'm just going to use a palette knife um, and just spread this around and just try and get a thin but evenish coat on it. Because although the, the dents and dips look funky, it's not what I'm after. Palette knifing is... Huh, that's so funny. Have you ever been in the middle of doing something and realised that at some time in your life, either recently or a long time ago, you've gone, oh, I wish I could paint with the palette knife. Or I wish I could do such and such. And then all of a sudden, several years later, without ever trying to learn how to do whatever it was you said you wished you knew how to do, suddenly you're doing it. I'm painting with a palette knife. Yes, it's not those funky trees that Rob Ross used to make with his palette knife, but I'm definitely painting with a palette knife. How cool is that? Hey. <laughs> ask and you shall receive just um i think i might use a paintbrush on the edges just to get the edges wet i'm not really expecting any paint to dribble over the side but i also don't want blank canvas without any paint whatsoever on it this paint is a semi-gloss. Uh, for those of you in America, the equivalent is um, what you guys call latex house paint. Uh, we in New Zealand and Australia call it acrylic or water-based house paint. Definitely not oil-based. That would not be my... Ah, 
look I'm making all right let's do that part a different way let's bend it that's better How does it get better than this? Let's tilt it and see if it can get better. You know, when I use that question, how does it get any better than this? If you say it can't, you're stopping your awareness. Stopping the universe, God, whoever it is that you receive information and guidance from from being able to give you the information the guidance or whatever it is you're asking for how does it get better than this is asking you know that whole saying ask and you shall receive it's true it's real all right that's definitely smoother than it was. It's not perfect. We've got runs in it. But hey, this is a tester, a trial. I will make sure that the, um, the big one is nice and smooth. You know what I love about these little 8x10s is that they are postable. Um, I've had quite a few of them go off around the world. And... Um, I'm just trying to get these this to smooth out a bit. That's better. All right. Now, somebody asked me the other day, why do you sometimes use pins underneath your paintings and sometimes you put pots? Well, there's usually two different reasons. One is the reason of I run out of pins. <laughs> and that tends to be a good indication to me that I haven't done any varnishing lately and they're still all in the paintings. The, but today, as you saw, I've still got a few pins, but... Um, Sometimes the wood in these um, canvases is actually quite hard. Like it's it's pine, but uh, where is it there? See how you've got that dark line? That's actually quite a hard part of the wood, and the pins don't go through it very easily. So um, as you can see here, I've got several holes where I tried to find a place where I could put my pin and it just did not go in. And I was like, ah, I give up. I am going to put pins under it. It's much easier. So let's. And for those of you that haven't seen my tins before, they are just little metal food tins. These ones are flavored tuna um, and I know some people who you who have cats and they use their cat food tins just as long as they are smooth sided and I use a um, an edge seal cutter let me show you so you've got a nice smooth edge on the on the tin and it's but it's cut the seal where the lid rolls over it's cut through that and um, so you've got basically you've got a lid still that has kept paint fresh for me for weeks because um, there's enough of a 
air tightness um, but also none of this is sharp so it's really easy there you go quick story back to the job at hand dun, 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 dun. right so what I've done is I have cut three bits of string because I'm going to do three pulls on this small little canvas um, and I've cut them roughly about twice as long as the canvas okay because I'm going to be pulling them along the canvas and I want to have some space to ziggy zaggy them all right and still have some hanging over the edge oops we've got white so next thing we need to do is create a dribble pile of paint um, to dip our string into and I'm gonna make this multicolored somebody posted on the and I'm sorry I don't remember who it was my big apologies but somebody posted into the acrylic pouring for fun Facebook group event a beautiful picture of a multicolored string pool and I was like I want to do that so you guys posting in this group these groups inspire us it's so awesome to see what you guys create um and what else we can create I love it love it how much more can we contribute to each other and I've probably got way too much paint but that's okay so I've got some blue I've got some crimson red uh Let's go for some medium yellow. In between. So it's kind of a bit, uh, what would you call it? Primary colors. Kind of. Well, it's red, yellow, and blue, so they are primary colours. It's just not the primary, primary version of those colours. All right, so what I'm going to do is lay these in one at a time. And if you see, I've folded it, but not quite perfectly in half. I've left a tail, and that's going to be my clean hand pull. And I'm going to lay that into my colors Oops. can you see that and dab I'm going to use a different finger for each color see if I can get it to stay reasonably clean in my color coding Eek. my yellow is disappearing into the red and blue already all right so we have a very multicolored paint so let's go back over to here and i'm going to start in the center because that way i can balance the others out oops sorry your, my hand is in the way it's wiggling too much All right, that is way too wide. <laughs> this is why you do practice ones, guys. This is uh, definitely why you do practice ones. So I'm just gonna 
once again drop that down that's my blue finger that's my yellow finger that's my red finger yellow blue yellow Just making sure that the paint is all the way over so no matter what part of the string touches the painting we will end up with now this one I want it to go the other way Oops, it's still going same way, isn't it? So the trick is to overlap when it when you lay it down, bring it back just like that. And just one more. Oops, don't want that big bit of crustiness. Now this is one of those ones that you might think, oh, I could do this with my small grandchildren. <laughs> it's a little bit too precise, I think. It depends on what you're after as your result, I suppose. I wouldn't expect a small child to be able to do the precision required for this but I have seen it done like on jeans and stuff like that so that's quite a funky look um, eek. bringing it down again and again I want to go the opposite to this one so that goes that way so I need it to go that way so it needs to come towards me and then around and around Eek. and around and I might even do another if the struggle let me another one just there okay now <sighs> the bit I want to be able to do is to pull all of them at the same time and that requires a lot, hmm, I think. Well, it's quite cool. Definitely funky. Hmm. Might have to rewatch that and see what actually happened. <laughs> I was so intent on pulling, I wasn't watching what was going on up here. Um, I definitely got some air bubbles, and I know that there's some silicon in here. So let's see what happens when we torch it. You know what I think? I think if you did the end, some multicolors. And then came down and did the next two in green. You'd end up with a really fun looking um, real flower. Like a flower at the top with the, the leaves. I don't think there's any silicon in the blue looking at the way these cells are coming out. This is a butane torch by the way. Um, just a little flame torch. Can you see the flame? And we're keeping the flame right away from the paint. We don't want to cook the paint. We just want to um, give it a little warming sensation. And that brings the silicon that was mixed into the paint. And only the yellow paint by the looks of this. Although I did think that they all had paint in them. Oh no, no. If they came out of a pot like this, they would not 
have silicon in. So the yellow was the only one that had silicon in it. That's interesting. It's created some cool effects. Let me get you down and show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So let's start over here. So there's obviously some yellow in there that then pop the silicon up through the red. And I can tell that there was some yellow because there's a tint of green. Can you see the green tint on the side of the blue there? This is how I can tell that it's the yellow that's got the silicon in. Nothing in the blue. Yellow's going berserk and then nothing in the red. That's so cool. I like this. This is just awesome. I think that is just the coolest bit of the whole painting, to be honest. Happy to be amazed by other parts too. Look at that. That's so cool. Look how the cells are. So pretty. I'm look oh, and we've even got a bit of purple happening in that one where the blue and the red have mixed. And that's a very little amount of purple actually happened. Oh, look at that bleed. That looks cool. Oh. It looks like we got a chunk in there. I'm going to have to fish that out. Oh, and that looks like a wave. Check that out. Woohoo. Looks like a good break to surf. <laughs> How's it getting any better than that? All right. So, I think I'm going to have to play with what's left over there. Hmm. Let me pop you back up on top and we will have a play. All right, so while that is drying, I'm going to come over here and have a play. I've got some white on this knife, so that's going to be fun. I'm going to just move the string out of the way. This is, um, what I've got this on actually is a piece of laminated, it's a laminated poster. Um, for a class that I did so I made a poster for it and um, then look at that it's so much fun when you fold paint over itself look at all the colours <laughs> let's zoom you in See if we get anything fun and funky first off because the cool thing about the using the cabochons and dipping into it you can just dip and then rearrange it and dip again and dip again and dip again and dip dip a dee dip dip a dee dip 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 dee so let me just grab some cabochons and we will have a dip fest okay so if you have not observed me dipping cabochons before, um, I have a video linked in the description that talks a lot of detail about it. There's also links in the description to um, on Amazon where I um, buy my cabochons. Um, those of you in New Zealand, the last lot I bought came through super quick. I think they had some stock in the Auckland warehouse, so it just was here within a few days. It was really exciting. So I've got this, where are you? Big, long, skinny one, and they make cool pendants. So I've got the flat side pointing out, the rounded side 
covered in blue tack and I'm just gonna polish the flat side on my shirt just to make sure that it's nice and clean because anything that is on there fingerprints or bits of dirt will still be there showing through Okay. So that is going to come up quite funky. This red is, oh, come on. Focus on what I want you to focus on, not on the back. The back. Focus on my finger. There we go. Um, the red is quite a crimson red, so it will be quite bright when it comes through, but like that it looks like um like something happening in a test tube or something <laughs> uh, and so we just pop it down paint side up and always check where you've just dipped see if anything funky happens but nope so as I say, I've got some white on the end of here. I'm going to see what happens when I do that. Got some air bubbles, lots of cell action. Again, we've only got silicon in the yellow. So all these cell actions going on coming up from the yellow which is quite cool do you see what I see all right I really like this piece here really like the way those cells have come up and I'm just pondering what shape to put down there um, Kind of this area here I really like and I'm thinking I might go with square um, and the square is going to have this diagonal does that make sense <laughs> I hope so I'll show you when I finished <laughs> Just as I imagined it. Look at that. That's so pretty. Ah, yum, 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 yum. I had somebody comment, the yum, yum, yum is, a, is not very nice. I'm like, well, thank you for your judgment. Ah, I like it. And that's how I express my like. So how's it getting any better than that? Again, give it a little torch. See you. If anything got inspired, oops, sorry, and just going to Hoi! Check it out. That's funky. Isn't that pretty? Lots of cells. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking I might do a heart in there, maybe. One of the really cool things with these um, doing the dipping like this, if when they're dry you decide you don't like it, you just stick them in water and they 
come clean <laughs> and you start again and you haven't ruined a whole possibility but you do need to make sure you get them nice and clean otherwise you'll end up with bits Now I don't know if you could tell but I went in on one side and rolled it over because I actually didn't want this harsh yellow and red line um, and by rolling it over like that it kind of mushed it sideways. I quite like that. That's quite funky. We'll see how it dries. See what the yellow and the... Um, red do to each other okay just one more and then oh no two more just one more out of this lot oh sorry my apologies the zoom in zoom out things doesn't always work polishing on the sleeve and I'm going in down here because it's got a very funky blue to purple and let's see what happens Yeah, subtle, gentle, but a little bit of flamboyancy on the side. I like it. And just one more. One more, guys. And that is that. That is just beautiful. It is yummy, yummy, scrummy. I like it. And I'm going in with a circle. Again, try not to get the white, but I think I'm not going to have much chance of avoiding that. Just double dip a little bit on the bottom. Give it a bit more thickness of paint. Not sure it quite has captured, but we will see once it dries whether it's got what I wanted it to get, what I thought it had. All right, my dears. Well, that was fun. I enjoyed that. Oops. Let's see. One last smush fest. Got butterflies. <laughs> no I'm going to leave it at that I've had fun that's the important part if Michelle's had fun the video is a success my target is to create things I like and have fun doing it what's your target? <laughs> alright guys so what we're going to do now is we're going to leave these to dry We've got the painting and five cabochons. Leave them to dry and once they are dry I will come back and finish this video off. And you guys will get to see what it looks like dry, what they look like dry and uh, how much fun can we have in the meantime. Three, two, one. Alright, so it's dried. And it looks fabulous. I love it. I think it's so cool. Um, oh, it makes me happy. How does it get better than that? It was fun to do and it made me happy. 
and I still like this bit here the most. <laughs> my son said, oh, it looks like the three cameras on my phone, Mum. And I was like, hmm, except your three cameras are black. Ah, <laughs> uh, so I like that, and I do think it's going to work for what I desire. Not quite sure what I'm going to do in the middle, but that piece of information will come, I'm sure. Uh, all right, so how did our pendants come out? Uh, well, our cabochons. Let's have a look at them. That's pretty. I like it. To me, it looks like, um, you know, like a lava lamp. It looks like the bubbles bubbling up in a lava lamp. It's so cool. This one I super, super love. Look at that. That is so pretty. Ah, oh, yum, yum. This one I really like the colours and it's got a little bit of interest to it. Um, but it's not in your face, over the top. It's quite pretty. And that one, I like it. It's got a lot of busyness to it. Um, other than it being yellow. Um, I'm sure somebody's going to love that. I like it. I don't love it. And the last one that I tried to get off the knife, well, hmm, it's kind of not really got it. It's not really captured. Sort of, but not really. Um, it's got a little bit up the top here. Uh, can we get it? Can we get it? Can we get it? No, don't focus on that bit there. If we turn it over, you can see a big white blob on the other side. That actually shows through. Um, there, see? I'm not excited about that. I like it. And it's not quite what I was after. Kind of looks like a bird's head that way. Like a mower or a emu or ostrichy type thing. Anyway. I think of my, my favourite of all of these has got to be this one. Followed closely by that one. So if you love any of these, let me know in the comments or message me. Um, I have a whole heap of cabochons that are available for sale. Um, jump onto my Mickey Art Facebook page. And we will be going live next week. If you are keen to join me and want to know when that's going to be, I email out 24 hour notice of the upcoming live time so sign up on my newsletter honestly that's about the only thing that ever shows up on there i don't use it for anything i don't sell you details blah 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 um come join us and if you would like to share what you've been creating with string pulls and chain pulls come join us on the acrylic pouring for fun facebook group event um that is up now and i'm loving seeing what everybody is creating it's so cool and uh you know let us know in the comments was it a challenge for you did you have to redo it what you know those sorts of things pop that in with the photo so that we can all share in your highs and lows and this was the 57th one and it finally worked. Yay! Oh, oh my goodness, what did I do wrong? But I really do think that the less background paint definitely helped with this. So if you are struggling to get the string pulls working properly, perhaps you may wish to give that a go. Less background paint. Okay, guys, I adore you. I look forward to sharing with you again super soon. 
there may be a break of a couple of days because I haven't painted in a couple of days I've been focusing on getting stuff cleaned up and varnished and stuff like that so there may be a couple of days while I wait for things to dry once I've painted tomorrow um, but I adore you and I will be back super soon bye bye